Namaskar, ready? Bonjour à toutes et à tous et merci de nous joindre dans la salle de presse virtuelle de la Commission européenne pour la réunion de presse quotidienne de, de la Commission, notre midday briefing. Et merci de nous suivre en direct sur Europe by Satellite. J'ai quelques annonces à vous faire avant de vous donner la parole pour vos éventuelles questions. Um, I will start with uh, the agenda of tomorrow's uh, college uh, meeting. Uh, the College of Commissioners uh, will discuss and adopt a communication on youth employment uh, support, a bridge to jobs for the next uh, generation, and the proposal to uh, reinforce the youth uh, guarantee. The college would also adopt a European skills agenda and the proposal to future-proof vocational education and training. At three o'clock uh, this afternoon, you can follow a, a technical uh, briefing uh, of the record on both uh, items on the college's uh, agenda. It will naturally be uh, under uh, embargo until uh, the beginning of the uh, readout press conference of tomorrow's uh, college uh, meeting, which will be given by the executive vice president Uh, Valdis uh, Dombrovskis, uh, Vice President uh, Skinas, uh, and uh, Commissioner uh, Schmidt, um, and uh, it will focus on both youth employment uh, support and uh, European uh, skills agenda. Then, um, let's talk about the uh, EU-Korea uh, summit by video conference which took place uh, this morning. Uh, so earlier today, uh, President uh, von der Leyen, uh, together with uh, uh, President uh, Michel and High Representative Vice President uh, Boré, uh, held uh, a video conference with the President uh, Moon uh, of the uh, Republic uh, of Korea. The meeting was an opportunity for the leaders to discuss the response to the uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic, particularly in terms of socio-economic uh, recovery research and uh, vaccine uh, developments uh, and deployment, international cooperation uh, to that effect, support to vulnerable uh, populations and lessons learned from uh, this pandemic. The leaders also discuss ways to strengthen the uh, EU uh, Republic of Korea uh, strategic uh, partnership, which is celebrating its 10th anniversary uh, in uh, 2020. And this partnership is grounded on a wide-reaching political uh, framework agreement, as well as the free trade, uh, trade agreements and an agreement enabling uh, the Republic of Korea's participation in EU crisis management operations. They also discussed international and uh, regional issues, and particular efforts to bring peace and security to the uh, Korean uh, Peninsula. The leaders have issued a joint uh, pre uh, press statement uh, and you can find more information uh, on that meeting in uh, that press statement as well as in the uh, full remarks that President uh, von, der Leyen, uh, von der Leyen gave at the uh, press conference um, which uh, followed the uh, video conference. I will now call uh, Johannes for an announcement on the rollout of 5G. Thank you, Dana. Good morning, or good afternoon, better. Uh, yes, indeed, today uh, we have good news for the rollout of the next generation of EU mobile telecommunications networks, better known as 5G. The Commission adopted an implementing regulation for small cells, which allows to deploy 5G infrastructure without individual permits. This means that 5G antennas can be installed more quickly, as normally permits can take several months to be issued. At the same time, the regulation foresees that 5G cells are as discrete as possible, visually and aesthetically. And of course, they must respect the strict EU exposure limits that we have, as well as any national or local requirements. Let me just uh, recall that in the EU, limits for the general public are always at least 50 times lower than what international scientific evidence suggests as having any potential effect on health. 5G is a major enabler for our digital economy and society, allowing for much better coverage, higher connection speeds, and at the same time, smaller cells and lower exposure. And thanks to the regulation adopted today, Europeans may 
benefit from 5G technology more quickly. We have more information in the daily news. Thank you very much, Joanna. Now I would like to uh, call Susanna for an announcement on the European Institute of Innovation and Technologies Crisis Response Initiative. Yes, thank you very much. On the 14th of May, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology launched the Crisis Response Initiative, providing funding in total of 60 million euro. Almost 1,500 innovators from 42 countries, including all the 27 member states, responded to this initiative. Based on an assessment of the applications, the EIT Governing Board has now released the funding to the eight knowledge and innovation communities, the so-called KICs, which will ensure that support swiftly reaches the selected applicants. 60% of the EIT crisis response funds will be awarded to highly innovative startups, scale-ups and SMEs to better weather the crisis. And 40% of the innovation project, projects sorry, <coughs> are addressing directly the impact of the crisis under the strand of the pandemic response projects. All EIT response activities are to be completed by the end of, the year, of this year, 2020. More details on the selected projects will be announced in the coming weeks. You can find this information also in our daily news and in the press release of the European Institute for Innovation and Technology. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Susanna. Uh, et enfin, je termine uh, les annonces d'aujourd'hui avec un, un nouveau point d'agenda. Uh, comme vous le savez, la quatrième uh, conférence de Bruxelles sur l'avenir uh, de uh, la Syrie et de sa région uh, est en cours. Elle est co-organisée, cette conférence, uh, par l'Union européenne et par les Nations unies. Une conférence de presse aura lieu à midi 30, accueillie virt virtuellement par uh, le Conseil avec les hauts représentants euh, vice-président Borrell, euh, le secrétaire général adjoint des Nations Unies aux affaires humanitaires et coordonnateur des secours euh, d'urgence, euh, Lau Cook, et les commissaires des Nations Unies pour les réfugiés, Monsieur Grandi. Nous tenterons donc euh, de finir cette, euh, ce midday briefing euh, à midi 30 pour vous permettre de suivre cette conférence euh, de presse euh, sur euh, la Syrie. Et notez également qu'à que 17h45, le commissaire Lennart Tchitsch et, et le secrétaire général adjoint des Nations Unies, euh, Lowcock, annonceront la promesse des dons, qui sera donc le résultat de cette conférence, et qui permettra de continuer à apporter un soutien international vital pour les Syriens et pour les pays de la région qui les accueillent. Et voilà, c'est c'est tout pour les annonces d'aujourd'hui. Maintenant, nous passons à vos questions. Je vous rappelle qu'il faut pousser les boutons euh, speak euh, pour que nous voyons, euh, pour que nous vous entendions. Et bien évidemment, vous devez euh, montrer votre main. Euh, donc, euh, je vois comme euh, première personne qui veut euh, la parole, Anna Lazaro. The floor is yours. Yes, hello, good morning. Um, I'm calling from Euronews. So I have a question on the development of a COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, today, a campaign has been launched at the European level to ask uh, the Commission to push for the waiving of patents and intellectual property rights. So I would like to know if uh, it would be possible to waive uh, patents if you are working in uh, this sense or uh, how do you intend to fulfill uh, your promise of uh, universal access? Uh, merci beaucoup. Il y a deux angles là-dessus. Il y a l'angle uh, interne. Um, sorry, I, speak, I switch to English, which is the language that you use. So there are two uh, sides uh, to the answer that we can provide. Um, it is what we do on the uh, internal uh, front. Uh, under the vaccine strategy, and that also covers um, what we intend to do in cooperation with uh, international partners on the external stage. Uh, I will give the floor uh, to uh, Stefan uh, to cover uh, these issues. Stefan, can you hear us? I hear you. Do you hear me? Hello. You hear me? We hear you. All good. 
Ah, okay, excellent, excellent. Uh, hello, Anna. Hi. Um, first, I would like to reiterate, um, as you know, that we have a very strong commitment, a commitment which is uh, laid down also in the strategy, of uh, making sure that vaccines are universal, equitable, and affordable, which is also one of the reasons why we have played this, I think, important role in the um, the, the the global pledging uh, events, which have been very successful, as you know. Now, the Commission, when you look at the vaccine strategy, you will see that the Commission supports um, a voluntary pooling and licensing of intellectual property rights with regard to treatment and vaccines in the area of uh, Corona, and that in line with the uh, World Health Organization resolution on equitable return on investment. Now, our um, uh, commitment to making sure that these vaccines are universal, equitable and affordable is also translated by the fact that, for instance, um, in our uh, uh, search for vaccine developers, the commitment of potential vaccine developers to support poor criteria, uh, to support, I'm sorry, poor countries with um, vaccine doses is one of the selection criteria we use to identify uh, vaccine developers with whom uh, we would like to conclude our advanced purchase agreements. How this is translated into the actual contract between the Commission and the uh, vaccine developers, well, this is something that uh, depends on the uh, outcome of the negotiations between the Commission, the member states, and rather the negotiation team and the vaccine developers. Um, in any case, it will be part of the uh, contractual clauses that are foreseen in this advanced purchase agreement. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan. Um, will other um, colleagues have questions on this topic, vaccines um, or health-related aspects of corona that Stefan can answer? If you do, keep your hand raised. If you don't, please unraise it. I think that uh, Abdullah has a question for Stefan. If that's the case, go ahead. Abdullah, can you hear us? The floor is yours if you, if you have a question for Stefan and if you, if you can hear us. Okay, we seem to have a, a technical problem. So your mic, so your mic signs, signs. Yes, uh, sorry, my, my microphone was switched off. Um, actually, my question uh, is in regards of the um, EU travel list that has been um, circulating recently and which of uh, no official uh, decision or uh, announcement has been made yet. Uh, made yet. Uh, I have a quick two questions about that. One is which, uh, is there an expected date to announce this list? And the second question is in regards of European citizens who uh, reside in countries that might not be on the list. Will there be an exception for them to return to, you, to their countries or Will the, the rules of this list uh, and, uh, you know, whatever uh, uh, things would take place to uh, apply it would apply to everyone coming from the country that are not on this list? Thank you. Abdullah, I specifically uh, invited colleagues to first ask questions uh, related to health uh, aspects uh, of the coronavirus uh, crisis Access. Or, uh, uh, on vaccines more specifically uh, because we had Stefan um, on the line. Uh, so we will revert to your question on borders um, at a later stage unless there are no additional questions for Stefan. So once more, if there are questions for Stefan, I will be ready to take them uh, now. Actually, I don't have such questions, uh, which is good, because that means that uh, Adalbert will attempt to provide an answer to your question on borders. Thank you, Dana, and uh, good afternoon, Abdullah. Um, so two questions um, on, on, on your two questions. First, the first one relating to the process, um, I understand it is still ongoing and it is in the Council. And as regards the, um, the state of play and any expectations, uh, I'm afraid you, you will have to ask the uh, colleagues in the Council to give you, um, to give you detail on that. 
Regarding the second question, which is about EU citizens residing uh, in uh, other countries, um, the final decision on uh, on this uh, is also in the hands of the Council. From the Commission side, we have indeed proposed um, that EU citizens uh, and EU long-term residents are exempted from the travel restriction, and that regardless of whether they are coming back home or uh, whether for any uh, for any other reasons. However, this is still in the hands of the Council, so uh, stay tuned. Uh, I invite you to uh, either contact uh, the colleagues in the Council or simply uh, carry on looking at the Council's website and, uh, and wait for the final uh, decisions to, to be taken and communicated. Okay, thank you very much, Adalbera. I will now invite uh, additional questions, if there are any, for uh, Adalbert on this question of uh, borders. I understand that Catalin has a question on the subject. Um, if that's the case, Catalin. Uh, the go case, ahead. Catalin. Uh, go ahead. Thank you, Dana. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good to see you <laughs> here. Uh, this is not about the borders, uh, Dana, it's about migration, but it's also, I think, addressed to Adalbert, if it is okay. Aline, um, Aline it's okay uh, with you. I okay prefer to say questions uh, on borders. That's easier and better uh, to understand for anyone uh, watching us on, uh, uh, on EBS to group the questions by topic. So I wonder if anyone else has questions on uh, borders. And we will revert immediately afterwards to your question on, on migration, Catalin. I understand that Lorenzo has a question on borders, if that's the case, Lorenzo, Vasi. Lorenzo, est-ce que tu peux nous entendre? It's possible that Lorenzo has a, a, a mic problem. Um, press speak, that way uh, we can hear you. Um, Lorenzo, can you hear us? Are you in the position to intervene? That doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, so we will, uh, we will try to get back to you later. Perhaps you solve uh, your technical problem. Can me now? Yes, okay. now we can Lorenzo. Please go ahead. Uh, it's working. Working. Can I, can I speak? OK. Uh, my question is, uh, is exactly about the, the... Unfortunately, we lost you, Lorenzo. So uh, you still need to fix your mic problem, your sound problem. So um, we will give it a try later. Okay. So do we have additional questions um, for Adalbert on borders? Um, I do not see any expression of interest for this topic. Um, in this case, uh, we go back to Catalin and to her question for Adalbert on migration. On migration. Uh, thank you, Dana. Um, so, uh, after the European Court of Justice recently decided that the way Hungarian authorities are running the transit zones uh, on the Hungarian-Serbian border goes against the EU law, the Hungarian Parliament has adopted a bill according to which those present at the territory of Hungary or at the border crossing points cannot apply for asylum in Hungary, but they are directed to the nearest embassy. UNHCR issued a statement yesterday saying that the new legislation may expose asylum seekers to the risk of refoulement and ill treatment which would amount to a violation of international human rights instruments. I am wondering whether the Commission shares this view, whether the Commission thinks that this legislation goes against uh, EU law, and whether it has any plan to do something about it. Thank you. Thank you, Catalin. This Thank is you, Catalin. for Adalbert. Adalbert, you have the floor. Thank you very much, and thank you for this question, Katalin. Um, we are still looking at the, the new legislation that you're referring to, the government decree and draft and, and law on the abolishment of the transit zones and the new regime to uh, allow for asylum claims only at, uh, at embassies. Um, however, what I can already say now is that we are, we are concerned about uh, any measures that could prevent an effective access uh, to the asylum procedure. 
Um, as you certainly know, EU law provides for uh, access to asylum procedure in the territory, including at a border in a, or in a transit zone, uh, if one exists, uh, and allowing applicants to present their asylum applications at the embassies can be a useful complementary measure. Uh, this, however, cannot replace um, the obligation that member states have to ensure that applicants can apply for international protection uh, in the territory, including at the border or, or in the transit zones. So, um, we, uh, for the moment, uh, this is as, as far as I can go, uh, but we are, we are assessing this government decree. Thank you, Adalbert. Um, I see that Lorenzo uh, is back, um, and we will try to uh, put him through. So, Lorenzo, please, your question. Can you hear me now? So we can hear you. Very good. I changed position. Uh, my question is about uh, the, the EU citizens or EU residents that come from countries which are not in the list, in the positive list. Uh, if if uh, uh, the Commission is asking to, to let them come, come in, uh, what kind of uh, uh, measures are foreseen? Because if they, they come from countries which are less safe than the ones in the list, they, surely they should have, uh, th there should be some precautions. I mean, they could come from a country where the COVID-19 is still in the, in the full uh, uh, epidemic uh, uh, stage and, and uh, uh, the cure was not uh, flattened. So what kind of measures are foreseen for EU citizens or EU residents coming from those countries, like India, for instance, or Brazil? Thank you very much, Lorenzo. Of course, you will understand that in the absence of a decision uh, by uh, the Council, uh, we can only talk to you about the approach that the Commission um, has proposed. Adalbert, if you want to take that. Sure, thank you very much. So yes, uh, first of all, I, I still have to underline that for the moment, there is no list, there is not yet an agreement uh, between member states. And uh, maybe as a general point, I would very much caution against um, uh, zealous reporting about any draft leaks that are circulating, because it may uh, it may also confuse uh, travellers who may uh, be tempted to make travel plans based on unconfirmed information. And I think it is much more prudent to wait for uh, for official uh, confirmed and reliable um, information that will be communicated by the council, according to what I understand. Regarding your specific question, so right now the situation is that uh, the travel restriction is. Uh, implemented by each member state um, in its national law and administrative practices based on um, a, uh, a, a political uh, agreement that member states uh, have and have uh, confirmed to us numerous times uh, in our video conferences um, and also based on um, a, uh, a certain number of principles that the Commission has communicated to member states. And uh, the last one of these is uh, dates from the 11th of, um, of June, um, where uh, we also, uh, the Commission also expressed itself on the issue of, um, of EU, EU citizens. Now, this concerns uh, just the issue of entry to the, uh, to the EU territory. It doesn't uh, concern the, uh, the issue of how to uh, safeguard uh, the, um, the, health, the public health during uh, travel. So uh, we've, uh, we've issued previous guidelines on, on this issue and we have uh, very much encouraged member states to, to take their responsibilities in, in this respect. And uh, member states are very much uh, free and indeed have the responsibility to apply any measures that, uh, that are necessary in this context. So for example, um, uh, the, the measures that, that you described um, are absolutely not, uh, not excluded, even if uh, people are specific people are not concerned by the travel restriction and it is up to the the individual member states to apply them thank you good thank you adalbert um, are there any additional questions for adalbert either on borders um, or on other measures that he that he normally deals with um, so nikolai is your question for adalbert i see your hand raised Yes, it seems, it seems to be. So in this case, go ahead. Nikolai, do you hear us? 
Press speak. Press speak. See, sorry, here I am. Yes. Uh, Nikolai Nielsen, EU Observer. Um, I was wondering if the Euro European Commission had um, at any moment asked the Greek authorities to launch an investigation into allegation of pushbacks by the Greek authorities um, on the strait separating Turkey and the Greek islands. Thank you. Thank you. Adalbert? Hello, Nikolai. Um, we uh, I, I, uh, we had a, an opportunity to uh, express our uh, position on on these allegations uh, here in the press room a a number of times, and I I will not surprise you uh, by saying that I uh, do not have uh, anything new to to add to these uh, to this position at this point. Uh, we have indeed said that we expect uh, national authorities to follow up on the uh, on the allegations in order to establish the facts and also um, follow up as as necessary, and that that continues to remain the case. Thank you, Adalbert. Um, are there any additional questions for uh, Adalbert? Uh, Griselda, you ask for the floor. Um, yeah. So please go ahead. Hola. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, J'aimerais savoir, est-ce que vous avez uh, une crainte quelconque de que si la liste n'est pas appliquée Euh, telle qu'elle est approuvée euh, par tous les États membres, il y a des frontières qui puissent être euh, à nouveau clôturées. Donc, si je comprends bien, euh, il y a une sorte de, de, de compromis pour ne pas élargir unilatéralement cette liste, mais il pourrait que certains États membres ne l'appliquent pas à tous les 14 pays qui sont, qui sont dans la liste. Est-ce que ça serait un, un élément qui permettrait de, de clôturer des frontières intérieures Euh, bonjour, Griselda. Euh, comme tu le sais, la Commission n'est pas une institution très craintive. Donc, euh, sur, euh, sur ce, cet aspect spécifique, euh, je, je, je ne pense pas que je peux faire un, un commentaire très, très détaillé. Mais euh, pour, pour ta question, donc, je, je rappelle qu'il n'y a toujours pas de liste ni d'accord euh, entre États membres. Lorsque le Conseil euh, finira ses délibérations et euh, adoptera un, un instrument, si tel devait être effectivement le... Euh, le résultat de ces discussions, euh, nous pourrons nous, nous prononcer plus, plus précisément. Euh, après, sur le principe général, euh, tu, as, euh, tu, tu, tu sais sans doute que euh, la Commission a exprimé son opinion qu que l'on devrait procéder à la levée des restrictions aux frontières en deux étapes. La première étape étant la, euh, la levée des restrictions aux frontières internes et ensuite euh, on devrait procéder à la levée progressive de, des restrictions aux frontières externes dans un deuxième temps. Et c'est euh, ce, qui, ce qui est en train de se passer. Nous avons appelé les États membres à lever euh, les restrictions aux frontières internes jusqu'au 15 juin, ce qui a été euh, fait dans une, dans une majorité, grande majorité des cas. Euh, et euh, maintenant, les discussions sont en cours sur la levée progressive des, euh, de la restriction aux frontières externes. Mais euh, tant que cette décision n'est pas prise, Euh, je ne peux pas me prononcer sur ce qui se passerait au cas où cette décision qui reste à prendre ne serait pas respectée. Merci. Et ça, c'est très sage de ta part, euh, Adalbert. Euh, donc, je pense que dans les contextes où cette liste et cette décision ne sont pas adoptées, c'est le maximum que l'on peut dire aujourd'hui. Nous comprenons votre intérêt et l'intérêt de, de beaucoup de, de citoyens qui, qui se sont, sentent concernés par, par cette liste. Mais nous allons euh, continuer euh, euh, à vous donner des explications et à regarder cela ensemble dès que nous avons euh, des nouvelles et dès qu'une décision euh, sera adoptée euh, par le Conseil. Euh, je veux inviter les collègues euh, de se manifester s'ils ont encore des questions pour euh, Adalbert sur d'autres sujets qu'ils euh, qu couvrent. Euh, je vois que Paula Tama a demandé la parole. Est-ce une question pour Adalbert or no, it's not, but I don't see any other questions for Adalbert, so I will then uh, give the floor to, uh, to Paula. Press speak, as we say. Do we have Paula on the line? Yes, we do. So. Hello? Yeah. Thanks, sorry. 
Uh, I, my question is for Ariana. Um, yesterday, Italian Prime Minister Conte announced that the leadership of the new Alitalia company, and who is currently their chief business officer, is going to become its new CEO. So the current number two is going to become the number one. The Commission has said that it will assess whether the new company fits with the criteria of economic discontinuity, including staff. So does this signal economic discontinuity? Thanks. Ariana is joining me to provide an answer. Thank you, Dana, and uh, hi, Paola. Um, well, uh, we cannot uh, comment on the specific uh, question and on the press reports. What I can say, and I have already said uh, in the past, is that we are in contact with uh, the Italian authorities on, on this topic. In general, um, the Commission analyzes the uh, economic continuity using a set of uh, indicia, including not only the scope of the assets transferred, but also the transfer price, the identity of the buyer, the timing of the transfer, and the economic logic of the transaction. At this stage, in the absence of any conclusive or definite element in this respect, we cannot take, of course, any, any position, and therefore um, I cannot comment further on your, on your question. Hi, sorry, just a quick follow-up. Sure. Um, you have in the past mentioned that staff is also a criteria, so governance and precisely the key, key management positions. Is that one of the criteria assessed? As, as always, uh, each case needs to be assessed on its own merits. Uh, economic discontinuity is, is uh, assessed uh, using a set of indicia, but it depends case by case, so I'm really not in a position to, to make any further comment. Very good. Thank you very much, Adriana. Um, does anyone else have questions for Adriana? As she's now on the podium. I don't see any hand raised. Does anyone has any other questions for us today? Yes, I see, uh, I see Catherine. Please go ahead. Hello there, uh, Dana. Um, uh, I have a question, I have two questions, but my first question is on uh, China. Today, um, uh, or uh, yesterday, uh, the, uh, the, the Chinese Communist Party Standing Committee passed um, the security law for Hong Kong. I'm just wondering if the Commission has any statement to make on that, now that it's formally taken place. And also, uh, there was a report yesterday by um, uh, a foundation that highlighted the, the, the situation of the Uyghurs in Xinjiang province and other Muslim minorities, saying that uh, there was a use of um, forced sterilization, forced abortion, and coercive family planning against this group. And um, I was wondering if there was any comments. I see that the US Secretary of State uh, made a comment on, on, on this report and said that he would like uh, other nations to stand with the US in condemning uh, these, this abuse. Thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine. Regarding your first question on Hong Kong and a reaction from the European Commission, I will refer you to the press conference which took place uh, this morning following the uh, summit uh, by video conference with uh, the Republic of Korea, where uh, President von der Leyen uh, clearly stated uh, our position uh, on that. So uh, you, uh, you will have there very, uh, a very uh, clear uh, position of the uh, Commission on this. On the second question regarding the, the Uyghurs, uh, I give the floor to Virginie. Thanks, Dana, and thanks, Catherine. Um, on, on your second question, indeed, uh, we have repeatedly uh, spoken out strongly against um, the situation in uh, Xinjiang, highlighting uh, the existence of a large network of political re-education camps, widespread surveillance, and systemic restrictions on freedom of religion and or belief against Uyghurs and other minorities in Xinjiang as well as reports of forced labor. 
we continue to raise these issues in our contacts with uh, the Chinese author authorities at all levels. You are aware of uh, recent meetings. Um, and as well as in international fora, including this week's um, Human Rights Council in Geneva. Um, the recent study you refer to uh, extensively documents uh, allegation of forced sterilization and forced application of birth control to women belonging to minorities in Xinjiang. This raises additional extremely troubling questions about China's policy in the region. If this is confirmed, such appalling practices, which would constitute serious human rights violation, must be stopped immediately, and those responsible must be held accountable. We reiterate our expectation that China allows meaningful access and a conducive environment for visits by independent observers with a view to an independent, objective, impartial, and transparent assessment on, of the issues of major concern. Thank you very much, Virginie. Are there any additional questions for Virginie on, um, on China um, first, and then on anything else? I see uh, Gerakina asking for the question, is this for Virginie, and is this on China? Please indicate if it's on China. <coughs> It's not on China, but it is for Virginie. Mm, I wonder if Oliver, uh, who is the next in line, has a question uh, on China, in which case I will give him the floor uh, now. Is that the case, Oliver? I understand uh, from your face expression that it is, but I can't hear you. So perhaps you check your mic. Um, we cannot really hear you. It's your mic, I'm told, so perhaps you, you try to fix it. So, can you hear me now? Yes, but it's, it's, it's very, very low. The, the sound level me? is very low, so perhaps you fix it. Do you hear me? Yes, it's Hi, better. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> does the forced uh, mass sterilization of members of a clearly defined ethnic group by government constitute genocide? And secondly, uh, do you think the Chinese government is taking the EU seriously when you protest human rights violations like these? Thank you. Virginie, on the first question. On the first question, um, these are delicate matters. There are a number of uh, texts that you can refer to uh, which point out uh, that um, uh, forced sterilization could be uh, entering uh, that category, but I would not uh, comment on the specific case. We are talking about um, uh, a report. I've uh, said very clearly if confirmed, uh, but uh, there are a number of uh, um, uh, convention at international level uh, that uh, have a number of uh, very precise definition and if you'd like I could actually uh, uh, look into that for you a little bit further and provide you some indication of this text that I'm talking about um, in writing. On the second question, uh, well actually wouldn't that be a question for uh, the Chinese? Um, obviously we believe that in all our contacts we're having a serious exchange on a number of serious matter um, which encompass a broad uh, area of subjects ranging from the economy to climate change to um, digital uh, to um, foreign policy uh, issues uh, including um, such as, for instance, uh, the Iran nuclear deal or uh, the security of the Korean Peninsula. I could name many, and of course that includes human rights. Um, I believe that um, in serious diplomatic relations um, Parties tend to take themselves, each other, uh, one another, seriously. Um, but I cannot speak for the Chinese authority, obviously. Indeed, Virginie, and the summit by video conference that we had uh, only last week uh, with both uh, uh, the prime minister and then the president encompasses this wide span of the relationship, which is uh, uh, important. Uh, for both sides and where things were very clearly expressed from the uh, EU side, as you have heard afterwards from the president uh, of the European Commission uh, von der Leyen. We spoke very frankly and very clearly. We stated our position 
on human rights and on Hong Kong. Are there any additional questions for Virginie at this stage? I see James uh, raising his hand. Is this uh, about... Uh, is this uh, about... Uh, this is Hong Kong and China, please. Go ahead then. Go ahead then. Um, we've been informed by President von der Leyen of the intention of the European Commission and the 27 member states to take uh, to place charges before the International Court of Justice um, against China. I wonder if we're uh, any clearer now on the timetable time for this. When can we expect the charges to be filed? And can you share any information with us about the details of those charges and which law firm is taking instructions to take the case forward? Well, James, well, James, both Virginie and me are taken by surprise by your question, because if you refer to something that President von der Leyen said about Hong Kong, there may be a misunderstanding. Um, indeed, it's my understanding you're rather referring to um, uh, a resolution, I believe, which has been put forward by the European Parliament. Um, so uh, this is not something that would be for us to, uh, to answer. Um, but don't, why don't we double check uh, so that we can understand better where is this, uh, what we looks to us as a, as a confusion or a misunderstanding and get back to you with the actual position of the European Union. Good, thank you very much, Virginie. We shall clarify that later after this uh, uh, meeting. And then now we have uh, Gerakina. Uh, with a question for Virginie. We go to other subjects other than... Yes, this is about uh, Kosovo and Serbia and the dialogue with Virginie. Uh, yesterday, President of Kosovo, who is charged for war crimes and crimes against humanity, announced that he will not resign before the indictment is confirmed. Now, having in mind that EU has ambition to relaunch the dialogue as soon as possible, even during this month, uh, how you will approach the situation, having in mind that you still have in the office president with pending indictment, while the dialogue was mainly organized between the presidents? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, so, uh, on, um, on, the, uh, on President Tachi's speech, we do not comment on proceedings of the Special Prosecutor Office and of the, um, and the Specialist uh, Chambers full cooperation with the specialist uh, prosecutor's office and specialist uh, chambers is absolutely essential. Uh, and we take note of uh, the announcement of President Tachi. Um, then uh, on um, more generally, uh, we continue to support uh, and to be a strong supporter of the work of the specialist chambers and the specialist uh, prosecutor's office. There are important a demonstration of Kosovo's commitment to the rule of law, which in turn is a core element for Kosovo's progress on the EU integration path and for the EU engagement with the Western Balkans as a whole. It is particularly important that, um, um, that we continue to, um, to reiterate uh, um, this uh, support. Uh, and uh, when it comes to um, uh, to the dialogue, uh, let me uh, recall that uh, we expect Kosovo's authority to continue to uh, upholding their commitment uh, to the uh, rule of law. Uh, and uh, when it comes to uh, specifically the interlocutors, uh, well, it is not for the European Union to choose its interlocutor, but for Kosovo and its authorities to decide how their interests are best served and represented. Thank you very much. Um, I see uh, Anna uh, wishing to ask a question to uh, Virginie uh, as well. So, Anna Lazaro, you have the floor. Uh, oui, bonjour. Vous m'entendez? Oui, nous t'entendons. 
Donc c'est à propos du Venezuela, et, suite à l'expulsion de, de, de l'ambassadeur de l'Union européenne, j'ai vu le tweet de, du haut représentant, M. Borrell, qui annonce des, des mesures de, de réciprocité. Donc euh, je voudrais savoir et, quand est-ce que ces mesures vont être annoncées et quelles pourraient être exactement ces mesures. Merci. Virginie. Euh, oui, merci Anna. Oui, donc en effet, tu, tu as fait référence à la réaction euh, via Twitter du, euh, du haut représentant et vice-président, euh, qui, euh, qui est Joseph Borrell, qui a condamné et rejeté euh, l'expulsion de notre ambassadeur, euh, de notre ambassadrice euh, à Caracas. Euh, il a effectivement dit que euh, l'Union européenne prendrait euh, les mesures habituelles nécessaires de réciprocité et rappeler que seule une solution négociée entre les Vénézuéliens permettront au pays d'émerger de la crise profonde dans laquelle il se trouve. Euh, plus précisément sur tes questions, euh, donc, euh, nous sommes là... Ce qui est certain, c'est que l'Union européenne et ses États membres sont en train de considérer les mesures appropriées en réponse aux développements qui sont en cours. Euh, plus concrètement, nous allons convoquer euh, l'ambassadeur de Nicolas Maduro auprès des institutions européennes aujourd'hui même. Euh, et, euh, euh, et à partir de là, nous pourrons voir euh, quelles sont les mesures euh, qui pourraient suivre. Euh, je rappelle d'une manière plus générale que toutes les mesures euh, qui euh, portent atteinte au travail diplomatique dans une telle situation euh, contribueront seulement à escalader la situation et remettre en cause euh, un chemin euh, vers euh, euh, une sortie de crise euh, en paix et de nature politique. Euh, en fait, euh, cela, euh, ça, cela euh, contribue à isoler euh, plus encore le régime de, euh, de Maduro au niveau international. Euh, nous sommes et nous continuerons d'être très actifs pour promouvoir une, une solution politique et démocratique au Venezuela à travers des élections législatives et présidentielles libres et crédibles. Euh, je rajouterai qu'en termes de calendrier, je n'ai pas de précision euh, à apporter, mais j'espère que ça te donne une indication suffisamment euh, euh, tangible que nous euh, convoquons euh, l'ambassadeur euh, de Maduro aujourd'hui même. Merci Virginie. Je vois Christian euh, qui a demandé la parole. Est-ce au sujet de, euh, de, du Venezuela, Christian oui, absolument. En fait, Virginie, je voudrais que tu précises, quand on parle de réciprocité, effectivement, dans notre esprit à tous, c'est le Venezuela expulse l'ambassadrice de l'Union européenne, l'Union européenne expulse l'ambassadeur du Venezuela. Chaque fois que ce problème s'est posé, et j'ai souvenir, effectivement, de l'ère des Congos, ce n'est pas tout à fait comme ça. Alors, j'aimerais comprendre quelles sont les limites et quelles sont les possibilités de l'Union européenne. Je crois savoir qu'il s'agit des autorités belges qui doivent expulser l'ambassadeur si cette mesure était décidée. Et Comment peut-elle être décidée Merci. Oui, merci Christian. Tu me donnes euh, l'opportunité effectivement de rappeler le cadre euh, général qui s'applique dans ce type de situation, euh, car je ne vais pas euh, spéculer plus en avant sur le cas spécifique, mais tu as raison, nous pouvons euh, rappeler euh, euh, ce qui s'applique. Le cadre juridique pour ce type de situation est la Convention de Vienne. La Convention de Vienne prévoit une seule modalité en son article 9, qui est de déclarer le chef de mission ou le diplomate concerné persona non grata. Euh, donc là, euh, je peux euh, donc rappeler la procédure euh, pour ce qui concerne l'Union européenne. C'est quelque chose qui requiert euh, le consensus de la part de nos États membres. Euh, donc euh, effectivement, tu as raison, euh, l'Union européenne ne peut pas euh, physiquement expulser ou, euh, euh, oui, d'un territoire donné euh, le, un ambassadeur. C'est une compétence du, euh, du pays hôte, en l'occurrence la Belgique. Euh, mais de toute façon, une décision politique dans un sens ou dans un autre doit être prise par les États membres par consensus. J'espère que ça répond à, à ta question. Consensus, ça veut dire quoi Unanimité Vote euh, le, si je prends, peut-être pour faciliter les choses, je vais me référer au dernier cas que nous avons eu, c'était le 19 décembre dernier, et une telle décision donc, de déclarer un ambassadeur euh, persona non grata avait été adoptée euh, dans le cadre d'une décision du Conseil, dans le cadre de la politique euh, de, euh, euh, 
de sécurité euh, commune, donc, euh, la, euh, donc euh, à l'unanimité, effectivement. C'était une décision du Conseil, formelle. Merci Virginie. Euh, je vois que Griselda a encore intérêt à interagir avec toi, à te poser une question. Euh, Est-ce au sujet de Venezuela, Griselda Si oui, euh, garde ta main levée et je te donne la parole. Oui, c'est effectivement ça. Alors, Griselda, vas-y. Est-ce qu'on a Griselda en ligne Oui, je suis là. Merci beaucoup. Tu m'entends Tout va bien. Je t'entends. Merci beaucoup. Donc, j'aimerais être sûre que c'est la proposition de M. Borrell, l'expulsion. Je comprends bien qu'il faut une unanimité parmi les États membres, mais est-ce que la proposition du haut représentant, c'est que la réciprocité passe par l'expulsion de l'ambassadeur de Venezuela Pardon. Euh, écoute, Griselda, je, je, tu le sais, on s'est parlé ce matin, je ne peux pas extrapoler à ce stade. Euh, je pense que le haut représentant a été extrêmement clair euh, que euh, ce qui a été annoncé par le régime euh, ne, ne restera pas euh, sans qu'on réagisse et euh, ce qu'il met sur la table, c'est la réciprocité. Voyons en quoi cela consiste exactement au fur et à mesure des développements. Nous prendrons en consultation avec les États membres, en plein accord avec les États membres, c'est ça aussi l'Union européenne en matière de politique étrangère, les mesures qui s'imposent et effectivement le haut représentant en tout cas a souligné la notion de réciprocité dans sa réaction ce matin même mais je ne peux pas aller plus, plus en détail à ce stade. Merci Virginie. Je pense que Christian est inspiré et a une, une, une autre question pour toi, toujours au sujet de Venezuela, je pense. Oui, absolument. Absolument, parce qu'effectivement, là, je suis complètement perplexe. Je veux dire, on a un État membre qui donne 72 heures à l'ambassadeur de l'Union européenne pour quitter son territoire, et on a 27 États membres qui doivent se consulter, qui ont besoin de l'unanimité pour faire la réciprocité. Or, on sait très bien que le Venezuela contre quelques amis au sein de l'Union européenne et que l'unanimité n'est pas acquise. Donc, ma question, elle est toute simple. Pourquoi M. Borrell parle de réciprocité quand il n'y aura pas de réciprocité et que, effectivement, le risque, et excuse-moi du langage, c'est que l'Union européenne va se devant l'expulsion de son ambassadrice au Venezuela. Christian, si je me permets, tu t'avances en anticipant ce que tu penses que va être les résultats de cette prise de décision qui doit avoir lieu. Et il sera difficile pour Virginie de faire de même, d'anticiper comme toi. C'est ton, ton droit et, ton, et ton, ta possibilité de le faire. Mais Virginie, je me demande si tu as quelque chose à ajouter sur la procédure que tu viens d'expliquer qui va être celle qui doit être, suivre au niveau de, qui doit être suivie au niveau de l'Union européenne. En effet, Christian, euh, euh, ça, tu, tu, euh, c'est tout à fait ton droit et, et, euh, et c'est très, et pourquoi pas, de, tu, tu euh, prévois un petit peu le, ce qui pourrait être l'aboutissement d'une discussion euh, sur cette question au Conseil. Euh, je ne peux pas faire de même. Euh, je ne suis pas aussi pessimiste. Euh, mais euh, je, je t'invite euh, à peut-être attendre de voir ce qui va se passer euh, plus concrètement dans les heures et les jours qui viennent. Nous avons un premier pas prévu pour aujourd'hui qui consiste, et de manière extrêmement tangible et concrète, à convoquer l'ambassadeur de, de de, du régime de Maduro euh, auprès des institutions européennes ici euh, au service d'action extérieure. Ceci est un premier pas, voyons ce qu'il en suit euh, dans les jours qui viennent. Merci Virginie. Euh... Do we have any additional questions for us today, uh, for Virginie uh, in particular? Yes, I see that Catherine um, is now uh, willing to ask a question, so please go ahead, Catherine. Hi, uh, sorry, Dana, it's not a question for Virginie. Um, I'm not entirely sure who it is for, but um, uh, it's a question about uh, state media. and. Um, The OSCE, uh, uh, in its preliminary findings on the presidential elections in Poland, found that the public state broadcaster, TVP, uh, was failed in its legal duty to provide balance and impartial coverage, acted as a campaign tool for the incumbent, and used um, xenophobic and anti-Semitic 
undertones. And my question is, um, it, does the European Commission have any role in supervising uh, fair media in, in member states? M my, given that I mean, you know, it's a very important part of the de democratic system. And I mean, it might be a competition question because the, the government, the Law and uh, Justice Party granted a 2 billion um, uh, Zloty uh, state aid to the public sector broadcaster. And I'm sure, I mean, I don't know the rules and details of, uh, about state aid and public uh, sector broadcasting, but I imagine that at least one of the conditions must be that that media must be fair and must be unbiased, must be impartial. Um, so it might be a competition question. So um, I just wonder what your, uh, if you're concerned um, about this uh, very biased broadcasting. Thank you very much, uh, Catherine. You very much, uh, Catherine. Your question uh, touched, if, if we are to judge by the keywords, media, competition, state aid, uh, many different areas. Uh, so it will concern many of our colleagues who will need to look at the different angles that you, that you brought forward. Uh, we will do so, each within our uh, areas, and you will receive uh, our position or our reaction to this um, in the course of, uh, of the afternoon, as we always do when we are faced with such with such broad uh, questions, but it's firmly now on our radar screen and you, you will have uh, an answer. Unless there are other questions um, and I don't see, then I will uh, go to the final announcement that I, uh, that I have to make today. Uh, well, c'est une coïncidence que j'ai eu uh, Virginie pour un long moment uh, avec moi sur podium. Euh, et je l'invite à, à me rejoindre, même si vous ne lui avez pas posé une question euh, précise euh, cette fois-ci. Mais ce n'est pas en fait une coïncidence parce qu'elle était souvent ici. Euh, on l'a vu, Eric et moi, souvent euh, à côté de nous, en train de répondre à vos multiples questions. Euh, et en fait, c'est une annonce triste parce qu'aujourd'hui, c'était son dernier midday euh, briefing. Effectivement, euh, Virginie, après euh, sept mois très intenses euh, avec nous, des mois très spéciaux, où d'abord elle, elle a contribué à la mise en place d'un nouveau service et surtout de sa cellule Affaires étrangères qui était fort occupée, comme, comme vous le savez bien. Elle était souvent sollicitée par, par vous pour des multiples questions sur des multiples sujets. Elle a fait un travail exceptionnel dans des conditions, comme nous savons, difficiles pour vous et pour nous, avec une salle de presse vide en ce moment. Et j'étais toujours impressionnée et nous lui sommes reconnaissants pour son professionnalisme, dynamisme, dévouement. Euh, et euh, pour, pour son amitié, elle était euh, une, euh, une gran, une grande, euh, un, un grand cœur au sein de notre service. Et voilà, à partir de maintenant, elle, euh, elle se dirige vers d'autres horizons euh, tout aussi euh, intéressants. Et bien évidemment, nous lui souhaitons euh, le meilleur et elle va nous manquer. Virginie. Merci Les beaucoup. quelques mots très difficiles à dire. Merci la question beaucoup. la plus difficile. Oui, tout à fait. <rire> Même si ce n'était pas simple aujourd'hui, je crois que euh, c'est beaucoup plus difficile. Merci beaucoup, Dana. Merci, euh, merci à tous les collègues. Euh, effectivement, euh, euh, je, je vais devoir arrêter ma présence en salle de presse et dans ses fonctions. Euh, et euh, je suis très triste d'arrêter de vous servir, vous les journalistes, euh, avec qui euh, j'ai eu plaisir à traiter en tant que porte-parole ces, ces derniers mois. Mais en réalité, euh, depuis déjà bien longtemps dans mes fonctions précédentes euh, que j'avais eues pendant quatre ans à travailler sur les questions de presse en, en lien avec les affaires étrangères depuis l'autre côté de la rue. C'est une décision personnelle. Je crois que le, le confinement a été difficile pour, pour beaucoup, pour beaucoup de familles et c est, c est, la mienne n'a pas été épargnée et donc c'est une décision tout à fait personnelle que je prends. Mais pour autant, vous allez me manquer, vous les journalistes et bien sûr tous mes collègues. Voilà. Merci Virginie. Toi, tu vas certainement nous manquer. Et euh, Nabila Masrali euh, sera la euh, personne qui va remplacer euh, Virginie 
donc porte-parole affaires étrangères, certains d'entre nous, d'entre vous, <rire> c'est un lapsus puisque j'étais journaliste aussi, vous la connaissez parce qu'elle était justement porte-parole lors d'un mandat de la commission précédente. Et Nabila, elle aura la difficile tâche, si je peux dire, de remplacer Virginie, donc à partir de demain. Mais vous allez la voir en salle de presse pour son premier midday briefing à partir de jeudi. Avec ça, Virginie, tout le meilleur pour toi et nous, à bientôt.